Let's talk about the new 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser because now we have the pricing for it and I do think this is one of the coolest SUVs out there for 2024. It feels like this is what SUVs were supposed to be actually capable to go off-road and I mean it is a Land Cruiser so it kind of has to do that here but we now have the, the pricing for it as well. So it starts at $57,345 up to $76,000. $344. So what we're going to do in this video is have a look at this design, talk about some of the spec and tech. And the cool thing here is that it depends on, depending on what trim you choose, you're going to get a completely different front end. One that is more retro inspired with the round headlights looking super cool. And I also like the more modern version as well. So I'm I'm not sure which one I would personally pick here. It's a very, very tough choice. But we've, before we jump into Photoshop here, uh, let's have a look at this article from Car and Driver. Let's see what this is all about here. So the 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser has a base price of just over $57,000. Uh, $57, uh, that's for the 1958 trim level, which has cloth seats and retro round headlights. You can see those right here. I do think this looks fantastic and I don't really mind the uh, red, the cloth seats either. I think it's a great trim. The middle Land Cruiser model is 63345 and the top uh, first edition goes up to just over $76,000 that we just talked about. Toyota says the Land Cruiser will go on a sale in the US this spring, so pretty much right now. Then you have the, the Land Cruiser 1958 comes standard with the cloth seats that are heated in front plus an 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and uh, Android Auto. And the thing is, the more I read about this uh, base uh, 1958 version, the more I'm leaning towards that one, because I'm fine with an 8-inch touchscreen. I still get Apple CarPlay, and I do get the retro headlights, which I do think also comes on the on a higher trim. I'm very confused about where you get these round headlights on what trim where you get the more horizontal ones. All Land Cruiser come with a 326 horsepower hybrid powertrain. That is great. Using a turbocharged 2.4 liter inline four gas engine and an eight speed automatic. So far so good. 23 MPGs combined, which is sort of, I guess, on the lower end, specifically for a hybrid powertrain, but it is also a pretty large vehicle. Four-wheel drive is standard on the 1958 trim and are, as are center and rear locking differentials and a two-speed transfer case. So this is still, we're still talking about the base trim here. You still get four-wheel drive as standard and center and rear locking diffs. So for me, I'm probably going to go for the 1958 version here. The 63,000 Land Cruiser trim adds equipment including heated and ventilated front seats. Don't really care for ventilated front seats. I don't live in Florida anymore. And even if I have ventilated seats, if, they f if it doesn't feel like they're cooling the seats, it almost feels, it, it feels a little weird to me. You have soft techs, upholstery, a power lift gate, larger display screens, and a 10 inch uh, 10 speaker audio system. And the top of the line combines all the elements of the 1958. It also adds different 18 inch wheels, special badging, roof rack, roof, rock, rock rails, and a front skid plate. I do want to have a front skid plate though. Looking at the uh, 58 here, you can see that this part looks to be uh, plastic in the front end. If we look at the uh, higher trim levels, you do have a, looks to be a metal skid plate in the front end. Now, jumping in and having a look at this design, f f I mean, there is no question about it. This is a great job by uh, uh, Toyota to design this uh, truck. And I also think, I, I don't think I've ever seen this big of a difference in trim level when it comes to the exterior design. But they did something smart here because if we look at the outline for, this is the, the higher trim level here, you see the metal skid plate down here. You also see the rectangular headlights. But look at the housing for this piece here, the headlight unit itself. It still has the exact same housing for the round headlights. So they didn't have to change any sheet metal just to switch out this uh, headlight in the front end. But at the same time, it still makes a massive difference in the appearance 
off this uh, the Land Cruiser. This also has some connections to the, I do believe, the 90s Land Cruiser, while this goes back to the original Land Cruisers with the round headlights. I love the chamfers that we have here. Look at this beautiful piece in the bodywork, cutting in to the sides, and also a chamfer on the other side, housing the fog lights. We have a nice bumper here as well that is split in the middle to house the front skid plate. Looking super cool. I also like the architectural approach. We have very vertical and horizontal lines and this is what you want to have in an off-road SUV like this. The hood also looks very cool because we have these two uh, lines or this muscle having the same width as it goes in to the wider to, to the width of the headlights housing so it feels like it has a great connection there let me know which one of these two you would pick yourself as I, again it's a very hard choice but when it comes to the price point this is uh, the higher trim level which you can also get with the round headlights because we have the metal skid plate here so i assume that you can still get a uh, well equipped or fully loaded land cruiser with these round headlights if you want to and i think these are the ones that i would go for i just love the depth that we have in this headlight itself and the indicator light here on the side looking more classic still obviously have uh, the same type of uh, vertical and horizontal lines but this just feels more classic land rover to me when i look at this design now looking at it from a side view here you can see just how chiseled this is and how similar it is to the i do believe it's the lexus gx the brand new one we have a nice shoulder line here straight from the corner of the headlight into if we were to continue here the corner of the taillight but instead what uh, toyota did here created a beautiful looking chamfer that goes around here i love this little radius that we have in this area and also up top this chamfer now continues into into the roof and then continues back into the d-pillar and down into the shoulder line in the very bottom we do have this line that again you should know what this does graphically and that is to carve out some of this volume that we have down here in the in the lower section I do like that these are black, the plastic cladding that we have going around the wheelhouses and also the bumpers, because that is what I personally want to have in a purpose-built SUV like this, the a Land Cruiser. I want to have it be more rugged looking, and I think that's exactly what these uh, pieces do for the design overall. Now, it looks like they did have a little bit of fun here by dipping down the greenhouse. So you see the glass, how big it is here, how tall it is, and then it goes up into a much narrower piece for the last piece of glass here but look at how this then continues graphically into the hood the hood line here starting from the corner of the headlights into the hood and then dipping down to have a a connection here with the lower piece of the glass or the, or the greenhouse uh, line right there and in here you have some black graphics i do like the uh, side mirrors as well very solid looking side mirrors squared off and still looking rugged and they're also massive compared to the overall dimensions of this car now looking at the rear end here super clean super classic and the key thing here that it feels like it's coming back specifically for as i said more rugged vehicles like this rivian does this as well is all the beautiful chamfers we have the chamfer here for the shoulder line that, that we just talked about and we have a bunch of small little subtle chamfers in the rear end just like we have in the front end as well and this is what i appreciate because this makes it feel like all the elements in this design has a proper uh, position or housing for them like they were designed to be there and then we create a nice framing for all these small features by adding this tiny chamfer going around it you also have the visible wiper here totally fine again this is a more functional utilitarian design so i don't mind it being hidden up here i do believe this can open up separately so you can open up this wind uh, this window instead of opening up the entire trunk further down you can see that we do have looks to be a full spare tire and you also have the exhaust pipe sticking out down here not sure if this is metal or plastic to me i would rather have it be metal but it doesn't really matter to me it still looks good and i actually like that they have this in a separate in a, in a different color than the rest of the bumper the leds in the rear also very simplistic have some connection to the original land cruisers but of course in a modern way with these leds also looking great overall these are the type of designs i want to see more of with classic 
proportions and also the designers feel like they wanted to create an off-roader from the start and not just a boring crossover SUV. Now looking at this interior, this is another huge reason why I am in love with the new Land Cruiser. First of all, starting with the steering wheel, very clean looking steering wheel. I do like the Toyota uh, logo in the center here and we still have the same chamfers that we have on the exterior and that comes back in the interior. You also have two very solid looking uh, spokes on each side here of the steering wheel. One uh, seems to be uh, for the uh, probably the gauge cluster and the radio settings, the voice command and the other one is probably right here for the cruise control settings. You have a third spoke going down in the, in the lower section creating a bit more sporty design but the overall layout of the integration of the screens is absolutely spot on for this design. Just look at this mansion that they created for the gauge cluster and this is beautiful. We, in addition to that we have a nice chamfer here as well. So everything is on point that I personally want to see in a, in a modern interior specifically for this type of vehicle. And I also like that it has a nice integration of the infotainment screen. How this line on the top, the house, the roof line of the house for the gauge cluster continues into the, uh, the infotainment screen. And it, uh, it has a proper housing uh, integration for it. This is one of the better integrations I've seen off an infotainment screen uh, recently. You have the start button right here and looking down here, all physical knobs, toggles for all the controls you would ever need. Rugged integration of the vents here. You have some more USBs down here. You have a volume knob, drive mode knob, and some more probably locking diffs or whatever this is. I can't really see what uh, what these buttons are for. More buttons, even more buttons further down here. And look at the design of the cup holders coming back with this rugged feel all over this design. So it feels like it has a continuity even from the exterior into the interior. And last but not least, you do have a wireless charging pad right there. Toyota has just been crushing lately. I, I do like the new Prius as well. I just had it as a press vehicle for a week and I really enjoy driving it. It was a fun car to drive. You can go and check out that review on the Sketch Monkey. And the GR Corolla is cur currently one of the coolest cars for sale because it's such an analog old school feel for that car and now you have the new Land Cruiser and we're also going to get the new Forerunner uh, within I think a couple of weeks maybe a month is going to they're going to reveal the new Forerunner huge important car for Toyota since in Colorado specifically it feels like 50% of all cars are just Forerunners everywhere in this state so that's going to be an interesting design to see. Overall Toyota is absolutely nailing their design right now and that includes the new Toyota Land Cruiser.